All right, welcome back to Shark Week 2024. I'll start out by saying I ran this webinar. It, uh, we had an awesome audience, but I forgot to hit record. A reason was uh, I was replacing uh, a speaker last minute who had dropped out, and I was a little flustered and forgot to hit record. So I'm gonna give you a rundown of what we talked about, and then I'm actually gonna give you a better demo than I gave before. I'm actually gonna insert a much better demo that I did recently um, into this video, and hopefully that will be uh, far more efficient and effective for you. So let's talk about the introduction to shark indicators, specifically from the perspective of automation psychology. Because I'm sort of in a uh, kind of a unique position where I'm the guy who's been with shark indicators for 10 years, who gets the phone calls, who does the demo sessions with brand new users. And so what we're doing is trying to figure out why people are looking at our stuff. And about half, I'd say roughly half, of our prospective buyers are trying to solve one specific problem. They say, I need to get out of my own way. I know how to trade, but once the action starts, my emotions take over. Now, if you're an experienced trader, you've probably experienced this, where you have a plan, you have some clear understanding or some understanding of what you intend to do. When these things happen, get into the trade. When these things happen, take some action with my trade. Move my stop loss, um, leg in, exit the trade, whatever. But once you're actually in the trade, it's almost like you become emotionally compromised because of external factors. And one of those, very common one, is chasing losses. You say, I had a loss just now, and now I'm effectively on tilt. That's a, a poker term <laughs> where uh, you've, you've had a bad day, you've had bad experience, and that lends to having a uh, compromised decision-making. They say, I can't suffer two losses in a row. I must hold on. Or, oh, I'll just widen my stop loss a tiny bit. No big deal. Price will turn around any second. I know it. This is fearful thinking. This isn't following your own system. It's okay to make changes on the fly, but not due to fear. That's where the mistakes happen when you're in the trade. And that last example where price is coming down and you probably, according to your system, probably should let price hit that stop loss or in some way follow your plan. But man, that is so scary to see prices encroaching on that. So if, if you're compromised emotionally, uh, that is about as scary as it gets. And you, you're so tempted. You know what? I'm just, I told myself I wouldn't do it, but I'm going to grab that stop loss and widen it out because if it's not realized loss, it's not real loss, right? I, it's, it's an unrealized loss. So sure enough, if I just stay in the trade long enough, it's going to turn around on me. I, I don't have any evidence or reasoning behind that. I just feel it, right? That can be very dangerous. So another one of those external factors is the speed of the market. So this is a very reasonable issue that you might want to solve, is that a human is only so fast and so if you were perfect, if you were a robot and you could follow all of your plan perfectly at exactly the right timing, maybe that's not so big deal. But uh, any plan that factors in the human element is limited by the human element, right? So if you're creating a plan that's all discretionary, you sort of have to factor in the limitations that you bring to the table. And so by factoring that in, your plan can only be so good, right? Whereas the whole idea here is to be able to take a step back and pre-plan as much as possible in order to free your attention for things that actually require a human to decide. That's a key thing, because not every trade action should be or even can be automated, right? A lot of people make the mistake when they're considering or discarding the concept of automation they say, I don't want to be held to a specific ideology, even my own, even my own ideology. I don't want to be forced to trade a certain way uh, because that will uh, cause me to kind of feel out of control. Uh, but the mistake people make is, is thinking it's all or nothing. Whereas a combination of pre-planning as much as possible is a valuable mix where you say, okay, what are the things that I actually know 
that I plan to do, let's try to automate that to free up my attention. And only you are the expert of your own trade system, right? If you've built out your idea, or maybe it's a hodgepodge of other people's ideas that's unique to you, only you know and can discern which actions should be or could be automated and which ones should remain discretionary in your control that retains your attention. Now, a little hot take here. This process makes you a better trader. Some people would say that's a hot take. It's like, well, hold on, I need some evidence of that. But I have been told by countless people that after they've gone through that process where using these tools, at least the way they want to do it, it sort of forces them to reevaluate what they're doing and why they're doing it. This is especially important or valuable for people who tend to th view charts in terms of broader patterns, especially if you're more creatively minded like half of us are. Oftentimes people just think in terms of, okay, I see a pattern on the chart, and so therefore I expect the price to move in a certain way. But when they're forced to reevaluate that, when they're forced to automize and go through that journey of automizing their system, they start to realize, ah, oh, you know, I never actually, I never articulated why I actually took that action or why that was in my plan in the first place. And by automizing it, it kind of makes you think through those things. As for me personally, this, this process has actually helped me from the very beginning, right? I started working for Shark Indicators 10 years ago as a techie person. I had no experience in trading. I had no, and as you know, from a beginner's perspective, man, the trading world is really overwhelming. There's so many terms and acronyms and so much under the hood stuff that's happening with trades that are not obvious and it takes so much study to understand. But because I came in from the beginning with tools like Bloodhound and Blackbird, um, I guess it was just Bloodhound at the beginning, but then Blackbird came along. I was able to take the things I was learning, I, Investopedia, YouTube, uh, books and stuff. I have uh, the, the uh, Science of Technical Analysis book that I'm looking at right now. Um, very dense book. Taking those ideas and applying them in the real world on a SIM account, you know, on the chart and applying them and then working backwards to understand how it actually behaves on the chart. So even for a beginner learning this stuff, it's invaluable being able to create a system that's automated um, and then that allows you to, to sort of see what's actually happening. So if you're new to our stuff, that brings us to Bloodhound and Blackbird. So in order to actually create an automated trade system, and the demo that I'm going to show you um, goes into this much deeper, but you have two components. You need the signal that says when to get into the trade. That's step one. And then step two is now that I'm in the trade, what happens during the trade? And that is Bloodhound for the signal, Blackbird for the actual trade management. So they work together for that purpose where you're deciding both ends of that, uh, of that equation. Uh, Blackbird uh, is order sets, trade management, and my favorite part, which is the trailing action rules, which are covered in the demo. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and insert, uh, if you haven't seen this video, many of you have not, um, I'm going to insert this. It's so much better than the demo that I gave <laughs> during today's talk. I'll just admit it. But before I do, I should mention that uh, all of our stuff is on sale uh, for Shark Week. It is the biggest sale of the year. And actually, the way things are going, um, I suspect it's actually going to be lower prices than even the upcoming Black Friday. Um, can't promise that, but that uh, it will be no worse than that. So if you're on the fence or interested in actually like grabbing onto these concepts of automation, get Bloodhound and Blackbird at least. We also have a massive sale on the everything bundle, which includes everything we sell. So go to our website, sharkindicators.com. Try the trial. It's going to last until the end of August. So you have 16 days from right now uh, to play and evaluate and then another 30 day return policy just in case you need it. So, um, all right. So here is the demo. Have a great day and stay in touch. Thanks. So just like Jeremy was saying, he's talking about creating your own automated trade systems, but most people don't think about what that requires, how you need to break it down in order to properly build, test, and start trading with automation. So you need the entry signal to decide when am I getting into the trade? 
and then you have to take that signal in and actually enter your trades and manage them according to your own rules. So we actually had to build two tools to handle both sides of that equation. So let's talk about what Jeremy showed on that last slide where he said, okay, we're gonna use a combination of these different indicators. Okay, I've got the Emma Super Trend from a Lizard Trader. They're awesome. Make some really useful uh, indicators that I think everyone should probably have in their toolkit. We're gonna make use of the Bollinger Bands um, as well as the ADX. So let's go ahead and bring up Bloodhound. Now, some of you have seen this, some of you haven't. So we'll go over some of the basics, but um, what we're doing here is telling Bloodhound, these are the conditions that I want in order to get an entry signal. When these things are happening, get into the trade for me. That's how we'll use them today. So in here, let's start with the super trend rule and just dive right in. So the super trend is kind of cool because it, it is telling us whether we're trending up or down and eventually we'll use that also as our stop level. So we're gonna say, I require that the super trend is looking like this. Basically it is an uptrend. So um, there's a lot of different conditions you can detect in here for your signals. We're gonna start with the comparison solver. And in here, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'll connect that. We're gonna get some, possibly some signals on there, but uh, we'll go in and select our indicator. So we'll go in and say super trend and double click and say, actually what I love about lizard traders, their indicators give us these nice hidden uh, plots here that, that indicate that yes, we are in an uptrend, so it has a value of one, and a downtrend would be negative one. So we can grab onto that fact and say, okay, when that's true, when it's above zero basically is what I've, what I've told it to look for, give us long or green signals. And when it's the other way, give us short signals. Now, uh, if you saw on Jeremy's slide, it said we're doing, we're going to focus on long trades only for this example. So let's just exclude the shorts. Now we're getting long signals on every bar in which that condition is true. Cool. Step one is done. Now, he also mentioned doing the ADX. So the ADX is pretty common um, uh, where it's, it's meant to kind of imply the, the recent trend. We were trying to exclude overly flat areas. So if for this system, we're going to require above 25 for the ADX. So let's go ahead and add that rule. And actually there's a nice threshold solver that can do exactly that when it's above or below a certain threshold. So we'll go in and select the ADX, double click. Okay. And for the output, we got to tell it that it's the 25 we're looking for. So what we're seeing here is for a long signal, when the ADX is greater than 25, give us a long output. That's one or a full 100% signal. And like I said, we're going to ignore shorts for today. So I'll set that to zero and hit okay. So now again, we're just looking at that condition in a, in a vacuum, because it's always good to look at one thing at a time to confirm that it's behaving the way you are intending and then combine them later. So we're seeing every time the ADX dips above 25, we're getting long signals. And when it's below, we're getting short. Okay. So let's combine those and say, okay, I'm only wanting a signal when both of those are true. Give me a signal when this guy is giving us a long signal. And also when I let go of this, watch the chart. And also this guy is giving us a signal when they're both true. Only then do we get a signal. So here, Super trend is trending up because we're seeing these plots and the ADX is above 25. Now, one thing we noticed while, while messing around with this, we actually noticed some, some good opportunities to expand on this um, where we could actually maybe get a slightly better fill by requiring a little bit more of a confirmation on the ADX, right? So yes, as soon as the ADX pops above 25, we're getting signals. But what if we wait a couple bars and say, I need the ADX to be above 25 for at least, let's say three bars. And only then do we start getting signals. It's just a kind of a way to confirm that it's not just a temporary blip, uh, that we are kind of getting a, a strong trend for a few uh, bars in a row. So to do that, we can just add a condition to our threshold here that is literally called a signal counter. We're going to count those signals and say only get a signal once we've reached three, not 13, three in a row. So let me run this through that. And now we've narrowed it down so that one, two, three, now we're getting signals. 
one, two, three, now we're getting signals. And uh, there were a few places on this chart that we found that actually did provide a slightly better fill. Okay, so we're one step away to bringing this in and starting to have fun with the actual trade management part. But you'll notice if we take a step back and remember what our goal is here is we're creating distinct entry signals. So each one of these on a bar by bar basis is technically a signal, right? But if we're, if we're actually planning on trading this in a live system, oftentimes uh, it can be much cleaner, depending on how you want to trade, uh, to block out any of these duplicate signals. Let's, let's just try to get this first signal and clean up the rest. So our last step here is to add the signal blocker. It does exactly that. It blocks signals in different ways. I'm going to set it to kind of a high number, run it through there. And now we're just getting the first signal of a trend um, and blocking the next for up to 50 bars. Uh, that was sort of arbitrary, but I found that it kind of works in this case. Um, but of course, as you're building, you want to be running far more tests than I'm doing just in this simple demo. So. All right, cool. So that is the first step, building our trade signal. Now let's close this window. It'll save our work. Now let's bring it into Blackbird, step two. So as you can see, we've actually got the trade panel on the right here. Uh, it's our own sort of chart trader. But you'll notice if I click go long or go short, nothing happens. Right? It's because we haven't told it what to do when we actually enter a trade. So all of those settings are down here in the order settings button. Okay. This is the Blackbird window. It kind of, I, I always like to call it the ATM on steroids because it has all basically all the same features, but goes much, much deeper in terms of what you can sort of control. So to speed things up for the demo, I've already put in my Bloodhound file that I was just working on. So once we start activating the auto trading button on the top right, that will start listening for these signals and enter automatically as if I had clicked go long instead. So now everything past that point is what we're going to set up now. So Jeremy, for our first order set, or I, actually we're going to build two order sets, a little spoiler here. Um, what should we do? Do you think a market entry or a limit entry would be better? Uh, you know, I'll, I'll just say, a, let's keep it simple today. The market entry is fine. I, I want to add, of course, you, 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 could, you could have a variety of different kind of entries there, as you can see. Of course, yeah. Okay, yeah, it keeps it nice and simple. Uh, so we've prepared our first order set with one contract on this CL chart. Now, if you recall from, uh, again, Jeremy kind of went through the slide quickly so we could actually dive into the demo for you. Um, but if you remember from that, um, we were going to have the profit target and the stop loss, at least at the beginning, attached to the Bollinger Band lines. So that's why we've got these Bollinger Bands on here. My plan is to have the profit target not only start where the Bollinger Band is, but follow it up and down. Um, along with the Bollinger Band. And then stop loss, same idea, attached to the bottom line, and then we'll add uh, an extra rule that involves the super trend, which is pretty cool. Okay. I just want to pipe in real quick, like the emphasis here is like, you like not very many systems that I've seen out there will actually kind of manipulate the profit target as well. And that's more than possible with our software. In fact, you can also manipulate the entry too. So if you had a limit entry, you can have it jump up and down, follow an indicator, do all sorts of arbitrary stuff, much like a discretionary trader would. Exactly. And that, that's a really fun part of my job is, is I do demo sessions with brand new like trial users, the, the people who are trying to figure out if this is right for them. And it's exposed me to some really creative ideas that people do with like, hey, I just want to trail my limit entry down. Actually, like the last guy that was presenting, he had the uh, that was pretty cool where he was trailing the limit entry down based on the range of the bar. Um, that is the sort of thing that you can pre plan in Blackbird and say, this is how I'm going to do it when we enter the trade do it for me right so it's really cool what you can do okay so let's set that up profit target first these are presets just to speed things up for you but i'll just do a custom here and there's two parts to it so we're going to set the initial placement where it starts and then later on we're going to get to my favorite part of blackbird which is the trailing action rules so the initial placement now normally oftentimes you would just set you know hey set it to 10 ticks above price and that's where the profit target would be so if that's all you're doing, when you first look at this screen, you might be thinking, why is this so complicated? There's a lot going on in here if I just want to set it to, to 10 ticks, right? But that's because it does allow you to get a lot more creative with it. Uh, for example, setting it to an indicator. So let's go indicator. Uh, it looks like I already did this earlier, so it, it remembered. <laughs> but yeah, you'd select the Bollinger Band. Um, I set it to four, which is what matches what's on the chart. Got to make sure it, it matches what I have. 
And then and we just choose. Sorry, the, I just want to mention that those you can actually see all the indicators. He's just got a filter oh, yeah. there, so that yeah. So these are all the in, yeah. <laughs> and, and that's one thing you know. Some people are are concerned like, hey, does it work with third party indicators? It does. And actually, we're the super trend is a third party indicator. Um, as long as it's coded reasonably well, we can we can definitely grab onto its outputs and work with it. Yeah. So for since we're working with a profit target, we got to set it to for a long trade the upper band. And if we were doing shorts, we would set it mirror reversed for the lower band. Okay, cool. And that's all there is to it for the initial placement. We'll get into trailing actions in a second here. Let's do the exact same thing for the stop loss. So we'll go in, get it on the lower band, and then we're going to test it out, make sure it actually is where I want it to be. All right, and we'll just swap that out. So stop loss, lower band, and we are good to go. Now, before we get into the really fun stuff, let me save our work. I want to show you the way that I validate this because, um, you know, user error, especially, including with me, especially with me, um, is uh, uh, easy to do if you're not paying attention. So it's always good to validate as you go. Make sure that that each piece of the pie uh, that you set up is is uh, set up right. So we have this nice dynamic planner feature down here. Um, so if I click plan long or plan short, it's going to tell me where my orders will start or would start if I were to enter right now. So this is my quick and dirty way to say, yes, I set up the, the initial placements correctly at the appropriate indicator levels. And as a side note, this is also pretty cool. It's, it's intended for discretionary traders. You know, if, if you, even if you're doing automatic, let's say you see this opportunity and you say, you know what, I wanna jump in now, you know, despite not getting a signal. No problem, you can plan it, and then you can say, you know what, I like this, but I'm going to tighten my stop loss. I don't like it quite that much, so let's bring that up. And then if I were to hit execute, it would enter the trade according to that adjustment. So it's it's sort of uh, uh, changing your plans on the fly um, without having to go in and like modify your whole plan. So it's a nice uh, discretionary tool. Cool. So we've confirmed that's working. Now we get to go cooking with the trailing actions. Okay. So profit target, that's an easy one. Just follow the Bollinger. So let's do that. Go trailing actions, set up a custom rule. So the way this works is when something happens, do something to my order, and then do we repeat that action? Okay. We're going to get into triggers in a minute. It's a lot of really cool stuff you can listen for, but we don't need that to just basically attach our profit target to the indicator. So I'm going to go do that. We'll go, I did super trend earlier. Let's do Bollinger. Double click and make sure it matches what's on the chart. And again, it's the upper band. So for a long trade, I wanted to follow the upper band and let's mirror it for the short. And then we just repeat that action. So repeat indefinitely every one bar. So every bar, as it goes forward, it's going to evaluate and say, okay, let's move it up or down to, to follow the Bollinger. And that's it. That profit target is ready to go. Let's sort of mimic that for the stop loss and then add our trigger rule as well, because I've got an idea to, to expand on this uh, beyond just what we've talked about. So we'll do the Bollinger first. Bollinger, swap it so it's on the lower band since it's the, the uh, uh, stop loss and repeat that every bar. Okay, <clears throat> so um, they'll follow those bands, but Jeremy and I were discussing ideas for, for expanding this to, to have more control over how the trade will play out. And one of those ideas that I've actually seen a lot of people do is uh, base our action on the current, the unrealized profit of the current trade. And so we were thinking and found it actually works pretty well in this case, um, is after we've reached and there's a lot of triggers you can listen for, but after we've reached a profit of 50 ticks, seems to work pretty well in this case, but of course testing is required to validate it, you know, more than just this one example I'm going to show you. But once we've reached at least 50 ticks in profit, move the stop loss, instead of being with the Bollinger, move it to that super trend, which that's its job is to act as a, as a stop loss trailer. So we will uh, respect its intent there. So super trend, double click, and that plot is just called the super, uh, the stop dot. So we can follow that, well named, and then repeat that as well. And so if we take a look, I'm going to add another order set in a second, but if we take a look on how we plan this to act, and we'll see it in action just a minute here. It's going to start, let's, let's imagine it started here. It's going to start down here, the stop loss, 
And as price moves up, it's going to follow the Bollinger Band up. And then at some point, let's say price uh, reaches a certain point where we've made 50 ticks in profit, it will then jump up and start following the super trend. Really cool. Okay, before we dive into that, one last thing that I love to do personally, and I've seen a lot of people during our demo sessions, they love this idea, is adding a runner. So a runner, um, if, if you're familiar with that term, it's basically just uh, having an order that has no profit target or a really high profit target. The intention is so that if if your price if the price is going to go crazy, you want to try and capture that that special event and and take advantage of of as much profit as you can out of uh, the times the profit or the price goes uh, way up. So we could create a new one, but let's just go ahead and copy from A. That's order set A. Now we have two contracts split up between two equal um, order sets. We'll delete the profit target to make it a true runner. But to make it a proper runner, like an actual, like, let's grab as much profit as we can, we need to, to change, to tweak this, the, the trailing rules on our stop loss a little bit so that it's, it's ready. It's, it's up by the price when the price goes nuts in those special events. So let's go modify our plan in this stop loss. And instead, for, for our runner stop loss, instead of having it follow just the super trend, which may not take full advantage of a runner, let's modify that to do more of a fixed trail, right? So instead of that, let's go back to price. And uh, you could just do, you know, minus 10, so it's just following 10 ticks behind. Um, but what I see a lot of people do is base it on the ATR. So even as you start getting more creative here, you can even set the offset based on an indicator. So you can go really deep here. So we're going to say, I, I already did it earlier, so it's already in here. Normally, you would just see it like this, and you just type in the ATR. So in case you're wondering why it's already, it's reading my mind, it's because I was practicing earlier. But there's the ATR, and we're going to set that to, let's say, a, a two times the ATR. I see a lot of people do that pretty effectively. So you're basically saying, as that runner stop loss goes up, it's following the price two ATRs behind it, hopefully for a nice healthy profit. Okay, so still repeating indefinitely, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Jeremy, everything looks good. We can start playing with this. Yeah, I think we're good. Cool. And obviously, we're just touching on stuff. This is a, a short webinar, but there's lots of additional features to, to help maximize your profits, minimize your losses according to ideas that you have, but we don't have time to go into you know super deep there. So we'll save our work. Let's jump to the live, quote, quote, live. This is a, a playback because it would be crazy to make you wait three minutes per bar to, to see if something happens. We'll enable auto trading. Again, we're getting ignored short, so we're just going to enable long trades for this. And let's just play it forward. Uh, and as you can imagine, um, I made sure that there was a signal coming up shortly. There we go. Okay, slow that down. Just make sure everything looks good. Yep. So we've got profit target at the Bollinger, two stop losses at the bottom Bollinger. And uh, as it moves up, it will follow. There you go. It moved with the Bollinger. One thing you will notice is that the stop losses are not moving down with the other Bollinger. Uh, it may seem like a bug, but if you think about it, most traders don't widen their stop losses dynamically. Now, you can. You can override that. But by default, as a safety mechanism, um, if it's told to go down, we're not going to have the stop loss follow the Bollinger into the abyss, right? <laughs> so it's just hanging out there ready to move up. Now, remember, look over here. It says 43 ticks in profit we've made unrealized in this order. And as soon there it is. So as soon as it hits 50, those two actions kicked into place. One stop loss is now following the super trend and following it up as it goes. And one is just hanging out to ATR behind the price. And hopefully that one will have lots of opportunity to follow up. Now let's go ahead and speed up. If I recall... That guy, unfortunately, uh, did not get a great opportunity to follow up, but it's still profitable. So it's just not quite the, the runner, the dream runner scenario that, uh, that we all hope for one day, right? So we'll go ahead and there we go. So it came down, hit our runner's stop loss, and the other stop loss has followed the super trend. Okay. Oh, that was close. Okay. Now, one thing that was kind of cool is when you're doing two trailing actions at the same time, um, by default, it's going to automatically follow the one that's closest to price. Because again, that's a common thing, right? So if, you, if you're moving your stop loss around, oftentimes you want it to be whichever action is, is closest to price, reducing your overall risk. Depends on how you want to trade them. So as this Bollinger creeps up above 
the super trend, you'll notice it's now following the Bollinger because it's closer to price. That's default behavior, but of course you can override that. Okay. And what's kind of cool about Bollinger Bands is as, as the, the fun part of the trade has ended and it's starting to consolidate and uh, go flat, um, our profit and stop loss have, have naturally narrowed down. Hopefully we'll eke out a little bit more from our profit target, but at least our stop loss is protecting us uh, right there. We did get a new signal from Bloodhound, so our rules lined up, but it was ignored because we're already in a long trade. And let's speed this up a little bit because we know there's probably not a whole lot left in this trade. There we go. So we hit our stop loss. And in this case, it did result in a $2,600 profit. That's two contracts on the CL. Um, but it's important to emphasize, so some people don't quite you know, catch this right away, but it's really important to remember, we are tool builders, we are not trade coaches. So if we're ever in like a, like a demo or sales webinar or something and we show a profit, it can be just as valuable using these tools or any trade system tool to, to, to capture, to discover your bad ideas just as much as it is to uh, find your good ideas or sometimes stumble on a good idea in many cases um, because a lot of this is repetition, trying things, see how they work, back test, forward test, and, uh, and discover things you never realized about your system because in order to do it all manually, it's, it's so slow and tedious in the way most people do it or many people do it that you won't have the broad view of how your system actually behaves over many, many, many iterations. So, um, like I mentioned, um, I'm the guy who does demos with trial users. So what I would recommend, um, we do offer a free 30 day trial because we stand behind our products. We want to make sure that if you're going to buy our stuff that you validated that it actually will work right for your trading behavior. So Jeremy's going to talk about, uh, support resources and the website that you go to, to learn more sharkindicators.com. What you do is click on the big blue button. Watch the video, it's two minutes. It goes into a little bit nicer detail on some of the stuff we've talked about today. So definitely watch that. And then download the trial. So you go in here and when you check this box, that'll let you schedule time with me so we can actually dive into your specific scenario, talk about your goals and see if these tools are actually right for you or maybe not. If they're not, I don't want you to, to be stuck with it, but the vast majority of people find some really creative uses for these tools. So I'm excited to work with you. So with that, I think we covered everything, right, Jeremy? Yeah, that's great, Keith. Cool. Let's see if I can steal my screen back here, or steal the screen back, I should say. Yeah, that, that should work. Okay, I'm not sure if I got the, the, it looks like it's, oh, I have to change the presenter. Sorry, guys, I'm a little bit, uh, <laughs> it's, it's been a long time since I've used Golden Media. Time. Yeah, and, and am I showing the right screen here? What Looks like yeah, the, the getting oh, started. Um, okay, good. <laughs> I got to check every time. All right, thanks. Uh, so, yeah, I just want to, again, emphasize, like, Keith was able to build a an auto trader from scratch in, in, within a couple minutes, I think 15 to 20 minutes-ish. Of course, there was a lot of explanation and showing the demo, uh, you know, as well. It took some time, but if, if you were to sort of just go at it without any interruption, uh, he could probably do it in five minutes. Um, that's a hell of a lot faster than you can certainly do it uh, when you're coding it. Um, and really, that's the power of our, of our software is the ability to to build stuff really quickly. That means you get to test stuff faster. That means you get to iterate quicker. It takes you less effort, less time. And if you're, you know, if the alternative for you was actually hiring a coder, it, it costs you a, a lot less money. And and really, it lets you focus on on building your trade system instead of learning how to code. Uh, and, and really that's where, you know, I think, I hope you agree with me that that's where the best use of your time is, is actually is actually the trading part, you know? So, um, it was, and also if you've noticed too, everything was real time, right? He would change some of the criteria up, right? And you would see the chart instantly update. So that's a, that's incredibly fast. Like that's faster than any coder could do it because you, you'd have to compile it and then, you know, presumably debug it a little bit and then you can finally see your results it's a it's a fair bit of number of steps um, much much quicker just doing it for the no code solution and seeing it like bounce in real time seeing seeing your results in real time so if you're itching to get started uh, we have a couple resources to get you get you going uh, one of them is is our online documentation and videos we've got tons of that on our website like we've got literally 10 12 years of, of stuff uh, we have how many how many videos do we have on on YouTube? We're creeping up on 800 videos on YouTube. Yeah. 
I realize that's a lot, uh, but uh, we we actually are in in the process of you know, doing an AI search kind of algorithm uh, that will let people look up stuff a little lot quicker. Uh, we also have unlimited e email support, which is also it, it's it's for trial users as much as it is is it for uh, paid customers as well. And this is also a fantastic resource. We have a live workshop. This is basically a classroom. A live classroom where we have our instructor uh, Zach White, who's been doing it for many, many years now, uh, and and you can just basically ask a question live or submit it beforehand, and then he'll build out the system for you, build out your trade system, uh, solve some of your problems, teach you how to use the software, and that's a free resource for both uh, customers and trial users. It's just actually free. You can join in any time. Uh, we also have a Discord community. Oh, by the way, that. Yeah, again, and as I mentioned, there's actually two workshops that run every week, two workshops, Thursdays and Fridays. Uh, Discord community, that's also kind of, it's quite active. Uh, and we have private one-on-one -on -one training, if that's what you'd like to uh, to do, if you want more of a customized approach. Um, and that really is, um, wraps up our, our presentation. So again, it's a 30-day free trial. It's at sharkindicators.com. I hope you'll check us out, get started. Uh, it's there's a lot of incredible material from there and actually one of the most exciting things I find is customers that use it and especially that are new you know they have these incredible ideas and you know it's always really exciting to see like what you guys come up with in in terms of your trade systems it's uh, it's, it's really really fascinating sometimes we you guys end up using the software in ways we never really thought was possible or even intended so that's that looks like we actually finished uh, uh, you know, pretty quickly here, I think in, um, oh, no, we have one more minute left, do we? <laughs> I was looking at two o'clock here. <laughs> say, uh, feel free to take a question. <laughs> yeah, yeah okay. Q &A. one question there. Yeah. I thought I'd mention, though, before you do, you know, you mentioned about uh, the, the 800 videos. I do like to emphasize, you know, some sometimes I'll be working with someone and they'll, they'll I can tell they're kind of daunted. <laughs> like, I need to learn everything before I can do anything. That's the wrong approach. These tools, there's a lot here, and we have customers that have been with us for years, and they're always coming up and tinkering. So learn one thing at a time that fits what your goal is and expand on that. Just like learning anything big, uh, it starts with one step. So, And we're here to help along the way. Yeah, yeah and I would what, say... What is that uh, Q&A question there? Well, I, I would just want to mention, you, you can do a, a lot with just no, even knowing just a small part of the software, right? So you can take your time with with uh, the more advanced features. You don't necessarily need to to employ those if for your trade system. Like a lot of the very common things that are done are, are very simple and and don't require very many steps. So someone asked if you could use work with the sunny bands. I'm not actually familiar with that indicator in particular, but I'll just say it does work with any indicator that's on your your system with uh, like installed in, in Ninja Trader, right? So you could have downloaded it off the internet. You could have got it from Futures. Oh, sorry, it's NexusFi now, NexusFi.com, or maybe you know uh, maybe you had it even custom coded. As long as it as long as it uh, displays some plots on the chart and or communicates with data series, if you if you're a developer, you know what that means. Um, th th then you should be fine. You can plug that information right into our our software and use it to to enhance your signals or use it to base your signals off of it. It's like 98% or something like that of indicators work perfectly. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for being here. Incredible pre presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, good news. No more expensive programmers. Now you can create your own trade signals, experiment with new ideas, and validate them with backtesting. You can literally create your own Ninja Trader system in as little as about 15 minutes with no coding required. Amazing. I have a few ideas. I talked to Joel. I'd like to talk to you guys too about automating my own system. But if gentlemen, if you're looking to create and optimize your own trading system and trade management strategies without an encoding necessary, Mr. Jeremy Tang and Keith Wolf of Shark Indicators have a solution for you. We've put their link in the box and you can learn more by going to sharkindicators.com, which I'll also put in the box in a minute.